Welcome to example instruments 5 LPF. If you remember, LPF stands for low pass filter. So we are now looking in this, in this example um, at the low pass filter that is implemented into um, the instruments of the internal um, tone engine. And these low pass filter are little processing units that um, filter out um, higher pitch frequencies out of a, a signal, out of a, out of a, a tone. So I've prepared um, a bit of a code. So this is the, this is the actual example that we are um, looking at. And here is um, the example. Um, it's, it's, this is basically the, the very first example that just plays a random note when we press the mouse. And now um, we want to um, change the, enable the low pass filter and change the sound characteristics um, of that instrument. So the first thing we, um, we uh, want to do is to, um, instrument, is to actually enable the um, low pass filter. Because if you remember from the schematic of the um, tone instrument, you might you might remember that um, it's actually comprised of different components. So the, the the most important, the core component, is this oscillator with the different with different wave shapes and that creates the sound. But then there's also two low frequency oscillators that are disabled by default, and there's also this low pass filter which is also disabled by um, default. And then there's this ADR ADSR envelope controlling the amplitude of the um, oscillator. Um, which is enabled by, de by default. So the low pass filter is disabled, so we need to enable it with this um, method call here. Um, the, so if we now run it, the low pass filter filters out the signal we create. However, we don't hear much of a change um, in the style, in the character of the um, tone that we that we play, and that is due to the fact that low pass filter by its nature um, has a much more audible um, or actually any effect at all on signals that are more edgy, that have more like little um, changes and and rough edges in it. So um, so you can actually hear much better what a what a low pass filter does if you change the wave shape of the oscillator to something uh, with a bit more edge. So um, we could use, for example, a square wave or a triangle or a sawtooth. And for no particular reason, I choose the sawtooth because um, I happen to like that. So if we, um, we change now the wave shape of the oscillator and um, that creates now a sawtooth shape um, signal. And after that, the Lopez filter filters out the edginess of the sound. So let's have a listen. So, so this um, is a sort of sound with a, you know, smoothed out edges. However, um, it's really hard to to um, abstract this and and to understand this just by talking about it. So, um, it is much easier understood if we change the parameters of the the low pass the low pass filter. Um, I think it's much easier to understand what it actually does, um, which is the important thing actually. Um, so uh, there are two parameters for this low pass filter. Um, one is the uh, cutoff frequency and the other one is the resonance factor. And maybe let's have a look at the, um, um, at the um, resonance first. So the resonance is a value um, that, we, um, that we specify and I actually I directly connect it to the mouse because then it becomes more interactive and we can understand interactively what it does. So um, so we use the the mouse y the, the y axis and map it all the values from zero to actually it's uh, it's uh, from zero to one. However, um, the um, so, so one is the maximum resonance, but um, this particular simple implementation of the low pass filter, um, it actually collapses uh, once it gets close to one and it sounds pretty harsh actually at some point. So I'll leave it at 95%, so at uh, about 95. 
So um, you, you can already hear how it starts to like really uh, create like intense feedback noise. But okay, let's let's. let's... I don't know about you, but I, I have to kind of, my mouth automatically starts to uh, react to this wow, wow, change in sound. But when we get close to, so at the bottom is actually the highest values um, for the resonance we're setting. And you can already hear sometimes how it starts to like beep as, as if it's creating some kind of, well, it actually is creating some kind of feedback. So. Depending a little bit on the on the initial frequency of the note we're playing, um, it can really create this kind of high pitched second um, frequency that we hear. Um, but we can actually um, look at the second value as well, which is the um, the cutoff frequency, and um, set filter frequency. Someone doesn't like my auto completion today. Um, but anyway, so we map this to the um, mouse X, which goes from zero to width. And here we actually um, write a frequency in Hertz. So um, by trial and error, I found out that 2000 might result in an interesting value range, zero to 2000. Um, and now we change the frequency above which this filter will cut off. And um, and again, like I think this might also best be um, heard. So now uh, if we move the mouse to the left and the right, we change the frequency. If we move it up and down, we change the resonance. can see when the cut of frequency is really low. So most of the higher frequencies are cut off. Um, at some point, even the original signal disappears because even that signal is uh, cut out. And the more, the further we go to the right, the more um, frequencies can pass through and the more of the original sawtooth sound we can actually hear. And if we now do this in combination with an up and down motion, so in combination with same, changing the resonance, hear the um, two parameters acting together and again my mouse starts to move <laughs> well this was actually already it so these two parameters resonance and frequency frequency can um, change the characteristics of your sound um, of the sound played by the oscillator and um, but the Lopez filter needs to be enabled first. Okay, see you in the next one.